Hi there. In this uh, topic video, we're going to spend a few minutes looking at the economics of the division of labour. The division of labour is uh, common right the way through every level of economic activity, from the, from the family through to local communities. Of course, the division of labour is prevalent in lots of manufacturing businesses and service sector businesses as well. The aggregation of the division of labour is specialisation of economies in particular industries. What's the definition that I would use? I would say that the division of labour is, is when production of a good or a service is broken down into many separate individualised tasks that are then linked together. Of course, one of the aims of this is to increase over time output per person because people who repeat the same tasks uh, become more proficient uh, through constant repetition. One way of describing this, which is quite neat, is to say it's learning by doing. So you find little tips and tricks that uh, minimises downtime and increases your efficiency over time. Now this gain in labour productivity, assuming you're paying people uh, more or less the same, of course you might have an element of productivity related pay, but for a given wage, if people are more productive, the supply cost per unit comes down, that brings down supply costs, that brings down the marginal cost of bringing goods to market, and that in theory can then feed through to lower prices for consumers, higher real incomes and gains in welfare. So division of labour is important in terms of boosting economic welfare. Here's a good chart showing the, the extent to which output per worker, value of output per worker in Yuan in China has surged since 2003. Tremendous lift in labour productivity, which has caused higher real wages, of course, but it's also raised the profits, particularly of transnational corporations. So productivity has risen and partly that must be the result of deep division of labour. So division of labour is essentially a, a, a specialising tax, improving performance, improving productivity, uh, bringing down the, the unit cost of supply. However, this kind of specialisation of division of labour can bring some disadvantages. Let's go through some of these. Of course, unfortunately, if you're doing the same task all the time, if it's unrewarding, repetitive work that often requires little cognitive skill or brain power, Eventually, that can damage labour motivation and can cause lower labour productivity. Uh, workers may take less pride in their work and the quality of the output may suffer. And we often find that uh, a major industrial relations issue, a big human resources problem, is that dissatisfied workers, demotivated workers become less punctual, the rate of labour shirking goes up and as a result, absenteeism increases. Uh, we tend to find that uh, people may choose to move to less boring jobs and there could be a high rate of labour turnover. If we think about industries such as retail, hotels, cleaning, catering, um, assembly work, some of, it, some of it's well paid but much of it isn't and oftentimes the rate of labour turnover is particularly high and that of course causes increased costs of hiring and retraining. Some workers of course that are deeply specialised in a particular job, a particular industry, uh, may find themselves out of work because of a, say, a cyclical downturn in their sector, and they may be at risk of structural unemployment because of occupational immobility. And that's quite an important macroeconomic point that comes from specialisation. The other danger, I suppose, is that the mass production of standardised goods, they feel like the commoditization of the, of the economy, uh, the, you know, the homogenised products, you can argue that means there's less variety for consumers, although I suppose that's open, open to debate. Anyway, so we focused here on the division of labour. It has advantages, but you have to be aware for evaluative purposes of the disadvantages too. Thank you.